In this video, I'm just gonna run through the unboxing, setup, and review of the Cool Wallet S. This device has actually been in the market for a couple of years now, and people ask me my opinion on it from time to time. So I thought I'd buy one, so you know, no freebies here, and uh, just run through it, as well as include it on my hardware wallet feature comparison list on my website. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe, and that way you can stay in the loop for content I make to help you find your way in the crazy and often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. All right, let's run through what you get in the box. So this is what you get. It's just standard sort of box with standard sort of security theater seal on it. All right, so this is everything that comes in the box. So we've got the box, we've got the recovery card, the sticker, the cool wallet itself, and the charging cable. And uh, yeah, as you can see with this, it's exactly the same size as like a standard credit card. It's got the uh, charging contacts there by the looks of things. And this is a little screen at the back. So uh, it's very impressive in terms of uh, having a discreet looking hardware wallet. You can just stick uh, in your wallet with your other credit cards. We're just gonna follow the bouncing ball. So we'll go to their website and we'll see what it tells us to do. So this is the website. I guess this just tells us everything we need to know. So we've got the serial number. On the back, we've got the e-paper display, physical button, shows us what capital letters and lowercase letters are all gonna look like. And there's a setup video. So step one, download the Cool Wallet app. Let's do that. There it is, just on the App Store. So we'll just install that. So that is downloading. Step two, insert the Cool Wallet S into the charger. Card must be charging during initial setup as well as when updating firmware. It takes four hours to charge and will last for two to three weeks. Oh, there we go. Hello. Please pair. Step three, pair your device. So we'll open the app. So we're gonna allow. All right, so there we go. It's found the device, so we'll say connect. So there's the one-time password on the screen. New firmware has been released. Please update your card. Update. Please insert the card to the charger. Yep, it's in there. Data on the card may be cleared. Recover your wallet using the original seed. No worries. Well, we haven't set it up yet, so let's just do that. Complete. So let's connect again. Please switch on. I think we're on. Please press the button. How do I press the button? It's actually, there's actually only a little tiny bit in the center, so if you've got fat fingers like mine, you don't just press the whole button. So we are paired. So we are gonna create a wallet. Create wallet. Generate seed by app or by card. I do like that it tells you that it's higher security to do it by the card, though by app was the default and the default length is 12. So it's towards 12, 18 and 24 words. So if you just went through the defaults, you'd be saying by app and you'd be saying 12. So we'll just see what happens first if I do that. Right, okay. So if you do it on the phone, it literally just generates it on the phone. It saves, ugh, it gives you the option to save the seat. Do not ever do this. There should be no option to save the seed as an image. Never, ever. So rather than write down and verify, we're gonna go back. Please, wallet creation fail, please reinitiate. Yes, that's what we wanna do because we absolutely do not wanna use by app. So we wanna use that and we are gonna go 24 and we're gonna say generate. Generate seed. All right, cool wallet says that too. Generate 01. So now numbers will show up on your Cool Wallet one by one. Press the button on the Cool Wallet to switch to the next set. Okay, so this is our recovery sheet and we are gonna write down the numbers on here. And uh, again, this is better off to use a pencil for this because it's not gonna run if it gets wet. I only have a pen on hand, so that's what I'm gonna use. So we're just gonna ignore what's on the screen of my phone for now and we're just gonna write down these words. So this step is to double check, 
please enter the sum of the 24 sets of seeds. Now this is actually very strange in the bit 39 seed actually has a check sum built into it. So this step of me needing to, you know, basically use a calculator to work it out is a bit of a challenge. And I don't actually have a calculator at this point. So I would probably, along with most users, be using a phone or a computer to essentially just punch these numbers into to work out what they sum to, uh, which is not great in terms of security. If you're getting a cool wallet S, you're going to need to go to the shops and buy yourself a cheap calculator before you set it up. All right, let's see if that worked. Creating, there we go. So clearly my seed was correct, which is good. So creating. Okay, we're done. All right. So before we go any further, it's important to store this in a secure place. This seed is your wallet. This device just allowed you to generate and store it. So this must be kept secure. So all of these numbers correspond to exactly one bit 39 word. So for example, that first one, 71425, corresponds to ring. So essentially what you would need to do is if you were just storing these numbers rather than actual BIP39 words, you really would need to print and store all 46 pages of this mapping table because without this mapping table, these numbers are useless. Let's just enable everything. I don't even know what half of some of these things are. It's a very interesting selection of cryptos it supports, but let's just add. It took so long the phone went to sleep, so now we have to do it again. At this point, it should be very obvious that there are a lot of trade-offs involved in using a low-powered, low-profile device like this. You know, things like wallet creation is uh, very slow. Things like adding coins is very cumbersome. And uh, even the seed process. Oh, there we go. Show full address. Display receiving address on card. This feature allows you to confirm the receiving address on card before. That's what we want. So display receive address on card, that's always a good feature just to make sure that your app is not lying to you. Okay, we are here. So basically this is our wallet. These are all the cryptos that it supports. Let's see, what are the options we've got? So we can basically just turn things on and off. Can we have, can we have multiple accounts for each coin? Oh, okay, these are all different random tokens that we can add. So we can add ERC20 tokens and things, as well as custom ones. We're not going to worry about that. So it looks like it's we're limited to one account per crypto. Hang on, let's go to settings. What do we got? Pairing password, full address, device list, card serial number. All right, this is very different to other wallets. So basically, it's the app itself and the pairing password in it that is the closest thing you have to a device pin. So if you haven't set a pin on the app and someone had say your phone and the cool wallet they've got everything there is no extra device pin so if you are using a cool wallet s you really want to turn on the pin for the app because that is the closest thing you can get to a pin for the device okay history marketplace right so it's got some stuff built into it okay well, let's just send some cryptos. So if I just say receive, so it seems to support pay to script hash segwit. What else do we add address? Add new address, adding new address. Right, so it does support different addresses. All right, so we've sent some Bitcoin to it. There we go. Oh, that's cool. So it actually does show unconfirmed funds and we can see it on that address. Okay, let's try again. Please switch on. The device is switched on. There we go. So if we press that little button, it cannot display receive addresses on the device. You cannot verify them on there. You have to trust that this app is telling you the right thing. So basically it will automatically show you the balance on here. Oh yeah, there we go. The, the Ethereum's on there too. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, zero point, lots and lots of dots. The key thing to understand with features like this actually is that uh, it's only going to be as trustworthy as what this 
uh, app is telling you and it's only going to be as recent as what was on here. Right, so let's send a transaction. Let's send this Bitcoin back. Okay, so let's send and we'll choose Bitcoin. Now let's see if it supports BCH32. So we'll just say we're on the Mac, so two. And we'll put in the QR code here. So there's the address from, does that one have any balance? Yes, that one has a balance. Ah, okay, there we go. So now it's showing us a fee, it was just a bit slow. So we'll say max. Now that fee is just in raw Bitcoin. I have no idea what that even is in terms of Satoshi's per byte. I don't really want to get out a calculator. So we'll just say next. We'll just go with it. Okay. So that's the amount from, that's the amount to. I'm guessing I've got to sign it on the card somehow. Okay, please switch on. We're on. Please wait. All right, so please review information. Press the button on the card to confirm transaction. Okay, so Bitcoin, yes. All right, so this is address part zero, and that's so that's BC1QDMXMT. So if we click the button, okay, that's the next part. So uh, Y4Q, and then there J. Uh, so you really need to learn to uh, work out what these different numbers and letters mean in terms of how they're represented on the screen if you actually want to confirm your addresses on here. So look, we'll just say that's good. So we will go all the way to the end. That's the amount. Press button. Sent. Sent successfully. Man, what an ordeal. Okay, it's definitely working a lot better with um, this newer phone that I'm using. So that's good. And uh, the app doesn't actually have anything that stops Android from just recording the screen. So I can get away with using this phone. How do we, how do we even do this? Is this the pairing password? Okay, so there it is there. So we can actually just pair it over Bluetooth. And that just crashed. Connection fail, connection fail. Okay, let's try again. All right, so after pretty much completely giving up, I actually got the pairing code off my phone and found that I could, in fact, connect to it using my Ether wallet. And of course, now it's not going to work. There we go. And look, while it takes ages to find all of the different Ethereum addresses, it's actually definitely working. So we'll just say access my wallet, and there we go. So it looks like this is just an issue with the Bluetooth on my PC, in that there is the Ethereum balance, and look, I'll just send that. Get rid of that. There we go. So we could actually use this for just about anything you want. So we'll just send the entire balance and we'll just send that transaction. Now the question is, what's going to happen over here? So normally on a ledger, this is the point where the hardware wallet would start to do something. There we go. So there's no indication that anything's happening, but it is working. So Ethereum. That's the address. And the amount. So we'll press the button to sign that transaction. So it says sent on here, but it's actually not sent. It's just on here. So I'll just say confirm and send. And that has sent. And uh, the important thing to notice is when you're using uh, my Ether wallet like this, uh, you know, this balance here on the thing will not reflect automatically anyway. But look, at the end of the day, that's pretty much just decorative. And look, just, just for kicks, we'll just change chains and see if it works on something else. We'll just put it on the Binance chain. Oop, didn't like that. So even though you can change networks in my Ether wallet, the device doesn't actually support it. 
Okay, summary time. So it's actually a week later now from when I did the initial part of this video and I've had a bit of time just to think about uh, this some more, to have a bit of a play with it and uh, just to get some thoughts together. And one of the biggest challenges with this Cool Wallet S is I still have no idea who this is really suited for and I'll explain what I mean by that. Firstly, while this device has a very simple and basic set of features, it really isn't suitable for newbies. This is not a good first hardware wallet. The reason I say that is in my previous video where I look at hardware wallets and some of the reasons why they're worthwhile, one of the key features is that you sort of get best practice baked in by default. And one of the biggest challenges with this Cool Wallet S is almost all of the defaults are actually really unsafe and really insecure. If you didn't really know what you're doing and didn't know any better and ran through the basic setup for this Cool Wallet S, you would end up with a 12 word see that you might have saved as an image onto your phone and you would not have any sort of uh, device pin uh, or application pin associated with this if you were just running purely on the defaults. That is hugely compromising the security that you would otherwise expect from a hardware wallet. This also isn't really a good wallet if you're an advanced user. You know, the lack of advanced features like the ability to have multiple accounts for each crypto, the lack of basic security features like being able to have like an actual physical device pin of some kind uh, and not just be dependent on your phone to secure access to this device. Never mind the fact that this device doesn't support things like BIP39 passphrases, so you know, it can't give you any meaningful kind of plausible deniability. It actively advertises your balance without any login, one press of a button, people can see everything. And the biggest challenge, regardless of whether you're a newbie or whether you're an advanced user, is you can get a Ledger Nano X for 20 US dollars more than one of these, a device that is superior in every way for every level of experience. The only real thing that the Coolbot S does that no other hardware wallet in the market seems to do is that it is waterproof. And that is because of the form factor. And again, that takes me to, I guess, what would be the conclusion? You know, the Cool Wallet S is all about the form factor, the trade-offs in security, the trade-offs in usability, all of these things are what comes when you prioritize form factor over everything else from the design level onwards. And look, if you're someone for whom this form factor is just absolutely something that you think would be important to your mix, then you know definitely the Cool Wallet S might be a useful product to you. But if you're someone for whom the form factor isn't a like hard requirement, you're almost certainly gonna be better served with a different device. So there you go. If you want more detailed information about this device, uh, far more detailed than I could go into in this video, definitely check out my website and the uh, feature comparisons and the spreadsheet that goes with it that breaks down all these different hardware wallets feature by feature. And if you decide that the Cool Wallet S or one of the other hardware wallets uh, that I list on that site is going to be something that meets your requirements in terms of how you secure your crypto, you know, definitely consider helping me out in the process and using one of the affiliate links there. Thanks for watching, I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.